This movie was directed by Oz Perkins and distributed by Neon. I will say that the the percentage ratings that a lot of these sources gave this movie is way higher than I expected. Especially coming from Rotten Tomatoes, and I'll get into that just a little bit. FBI agent Lee Harker is assigned to an unsolved serial killer case that takes an unexpected turn, revealing evidence of the occult. Harker discovers a personal connection to the killer and must stop him before he strikes again. So this movie just came out over a week ago. And it has a short cast to it. So you have Nicolas Cage playing the main antagonist, Long Legs, who is this demonic, Satan-worshipping serial killer. Then you have the main protagonist, Micah Monroe playing Lee Harker who's an FBI agent. You have Alicia Witt playing her mother, Ruth Harker. You have Blair Underwood playing Agent Carter, who is Lee's partner. Another FBI agent who's unnamed, who's played by Aaron Boys or Boyas. And yes, that's it. Now, I'll tell you this. Movie Insider gave this movie a 74%. Internet Movie Database gave it a 73%. Fandango gave it a 64%. And Google users gave it a... The Google, right now, it's kind of a gap right now. So this says 54 to 76%. It's kind of wide right there. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a number that's higher than all of that. They gave this movie an 86%. Now, The Independent also gave it a 80%. Wow. And I got to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe I wasn't analyzing the movie in the right way or maybe I just was missing something. And I'm not here to trash it. I'm not saying that it was bad. But to me, it dragged on a lot longer than I expected it was a little bit more boring than expected. From the information I've gathered about it, I have to say that I have to give this movie about... This definitely is not like a, what I call a rewatchable movie for me. I think I would really have to give this movie about a... A six, give or take. So that could be like... I'm kind of splitting hairs right here. That could be 5.9 or 6.1. I think about a six will do that for me because I just feel that I thought there was going to be more excitement to it. And I guess this is what's regarded as a, it's a horror mystery, but you can also add in, it's like crime investigation, possession type movie. There was a lot of parts to it that I didn't get. Apparently he was possessing people vicariously it's a little bit hard to describe because this is definitely not what i expected but i'm not telling you not to watch it you might watch it and you might find it to be the most interesting thing you could watch it and probably be the least interesting thing i've definitely seen way way better movies obviously especially the ones i talk about in this show all the time but to be fair i've also seen way 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 worse i mean i've i've seen movies and i give them like okay this is only a two or a three or this is a four so that's really about as best as I can describe. Let me see if Common Sense Media has a page about this. I didn't even think to, I should have typed this in before I did the, uh, before I started this video. Long Legs Movie Review. Let's see how they broke it down. They gave the movie also an 80%. I must have missed something here. <laughs> so... Are there any positive messages? It says right here, none. Murders occur for no reason other than Satan made me do it. Efforts are made to solve the puzzle before more lives are lost, but this effort is only, this effort only partially succeeds. Positive role models? A little. Lee Harker excels at her job solving puzzles and finding clues, but she also frequently seems sad or unsatisfied. She also has a complicated relationship with her mother, keeping things from her and lying to her. 
parents need to know that this film is a crafty, unsettling horror movie about an FBI agent who finds new clues in a decades-old case involving a serial killer. Violence is intense and includes guns and shootings, sometimes at close range and sometimes fatal. Characters being killed in shocking and gruesome ways, blood splatters, blood spatters, spurts and pools, decomposing bodies covered in maggots, characters slashed with an axe, and a woman being hogtied. Characters are also frequently in peril. Knives are used and there are jump scares and graphic de descriptions in dialogue. One character bashes their head on a table, smashing their nose and spattering blood until they're dead. Which that was one of the bad guys, so I don't feel sorry for that person. <laughs> um, so far, there's been nine different individual reviews on it. Four of them are kids and five are adults. Psychological serial killer horror type movie. Yeah, I guess that's how you can describe that. Now, how do they break this one down even more? In this movie, in Long Legs, it's the 1990s and FBI agent Lee Harker is transferred to the case of the serial killer known as Long Legs after she demonstrates psychic abilities. According to Lee's supervisor, Agent Carter, Long Legs, who's responsible for murdering families with daughters whose birthdays are on the 14th of the month, has been at large for decades. Long leg somehow influences the fathers in these families to do the actual killings, leaving no trace of his own involvement other than coded letters that no one has been able to crack. Lee gets a mysterious envelope from the killer in which he promises to murder her own mother if she tells anyone she's been contacted. But as Lee continues to find new clues, the case grows stranger and stranger. Yeah, you're telling me. So their review was 80%. The five adults together gave it a 60% and the four kids gave it a 100%. Amazing. Is it any good? It says right here, a cat and mouse thriller in the grand tradition of great serial killer movies. This one uses familiar elements but ramps them up into nightmarish levels, up to nightmarish levels with its stark angles and chilling rot rhythms. Written and directed by Osgood, Oz Perkins, the son of Psycho star Anthony Perkins, this movie goes a long way towards proving his status as a top horror filmmaker. It begins with what looks like old 8mm home movie footage with just, a, with just a suggestion of what's to come. Nicolas Cage appears only from the mouth downward and his sudden shriek is truly disquieting. Yeah, that's true. Then the frame stretches out to wide making nerve-rattling use of its choices of composition, sound, and cutting. It's so expertly crafted, expertly crafted, that standard jump scares play more like genuine shocks. The puzzle is crafty and clever, keeping viewers riveted, although unlike its spiritual, spiritual inspirations, The Silence of the Lambs, Seven, and Zodiac, this movie also flirts with the supernatural, which sometimes works and sometimes feels like a shortcut. The performances are solid, especially a heavily made-up cage as an even more over-the-top character than we could have possibly imagined. Monroe also delivers, although her character by design comes across as a bit chilly, which gives the movie a distancing quality. But the end result is still brutally effective, effortlessly worming its way into a part of your brain where the dark things live. So that's about as best as I can describe it. And I just felt like I wasn't really engaged into it because I felt it dragged on. In order to keep me, you know, keep my attention on a the movie, there has to be constant or at least near semi-regular jump scares, thrills, you know, things like that. Now, this one just didn't do it for me. But again, your opinion might defer. So you watch the movie and you tell me what you think. If you've already seen the movie, you tell me what you think. Do you think this movie is better than what I rated it? Do you think it's worse than what I rated it? Or do you think it's just what I rated it? So you tell me, like and subscribe. I got more coming.